Entroud released recently and is one of the best survival games that I have ever played. If you don't know what Entroud is, it's a brand new survival sandbox game where the player can build insane structures, craft, destroy the entire world, and build their character, all while using various weapons and magic to fight back the shroud and various creatures in the world. In this video, I'm going to talk about my experiences with the game and what I believe to be the three main pillars that make this game great. Crafting and building is one of the main aspects in the game as you truly cannot have one without the other. First starting the game after doing a short tutorial, the game quickly guides you to a plot of land where you can build your first flame altar. These flame altars allow the player to claim a base location to start building. Once placed, the game asks you to make a workbench where the player can make basic tools and structures materials, thus allowing players to craft a build hammer and the materials they need to build their base. When first starting out, the materials are very limiting and give little to desire as they're just stone, wood, and thatch, but through the use of the exploration, you're able to find different and unique materials throughout the world including the ability to find NPCs you can put in your base in order to make more crafting stations, to make more unique structures and gear for yourself. One of the main parts that makes building very enjoyable is how many different variants in structures you can make, with not only the look but size as well, allowing the players to make anything from a dirt hut to full-on castles. On top of this, you're able to slowly upgrade your flame altar over time to give you more and more space to build within. I even discovered you can completely destroy the flame altar and it will keep the structures there, allowing you to make a very unique environment for the world without taking up base locations. Although I'm not sure if this is something that'll be changed in the future. One thing I don't like about building though is the roofing as a lot of their pointed roofs feel too pointy and very unnatural, forcing a lot of structures I made personally to have flat roofs instead. Alrighty, this is going to be a very short base tour, so we'll go ahead and turn around here. This is the outside of the base. We built this on this part of the map right here. I'll go ahead and zoom out. It's in the this left-hand corner over here on the edge above the salt mines. This is the outside of the base. Like I said, you have to have a lot of flat roofs and I'm just not, a, I'm not a huge fan of it. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but it's also not the best it could be ever. Going into the base, you can have your crafters. So we have a crafter here, crafter there. We have a bunch of crafting stations basically everywhere throughout the base. These are literally just to make the base look nicer. That's, that's it. You can make a full crafting base and not have any tables or anything in the base if you so desire not to. Then, of course, we have this guy here, which is the blacksmith, a bunch of storage. You can actually stack storage boxes like this if you unsnap them. That's something that I learned. It's really, really handy, so you can put a lot more storage in your base. And then we have, obviously, more crafting stations. And then we come out here. We have the other two uh, merchants out here as well. So that is all five, and we have some more crafting stations out here. And then when you come upstairs, this is where our beds are. So we have our triple bed, because I was playing this with two of my buddies. Each one of these is a little personal storage thing. And then these fireplaces just keep us warm. So that's how we have a comfort level 14 in our base. And we get 19 minutes of the rest of bonus, which I believe makes it where you get like more XP and like mine faster and stuff like that. And like lose less stam, if I remember correctly. Uh, and then down here, we have the toilet. Exploration and leveling is the most important part in the entire game. When starting a new world, you'll be met with a tutorial that teaches you how to jump, climb, the usefulness of light, and how to fight enemies. Immediately after, you'll be able to explore two different sets of ruins that don't have much loot, but teaches you these things will probably be placed throughout the world with more loot and harder enemies. Lead into the creation of your starter base and the beginning zones. The beginning zones and try to do multiple things. Firstly, they teach the player about shroud zones and how to survive them, followed up by what an ancient vault is. Ancient vaults are a core set segment of the game as not only do they have multiple enemies to fight at different skill levels, but they also introduce the players to the five main NPCs that allow the players to craft different equipment from potions and spells to weapons and armor. After this, players are introduced to gliding and grappling, the two main sources of travel and enshrouded. When gliding, I recommend starting from a high peak and leaping as this will allow you to go much further, although make sure you watch your stam as if it runs out you'll fall to your death. If you save even a tiny bit though, you are able to completely break your fall with a glide. Gliding is insanely fun and as you progress you can make better gliders that can make you go much much further grappling is very simple once you have a grapple hook you can find an area that has a hook and grapple up to it i believe you can even make grapple hook locations on your base although i've never built them myself after obtaining a grapple hook and a glider you can now explore spires spires are a massive tower that have traps puzzles and tons of loot so the most part though you can get through them using your glider grapple and a little bit of patience once you complete the tower you're able to collect a waypoint that you can fast travel to at any time one thing that i really enjoy about the spires is that they require the player to think outside of the box while still being able to get a lot of loot from them as well 
and it gives the players a free teleport location that they can glide off of from a very very high peak in order to get to new quests and new locations as well outside of these spires the player can explore the open world that is filled with tons of mini bosses enemy camps ruins and tons of hidden quests honestly at first i figured these would get boring quickly but i was wrong as each and every camp is designed differently with unique features allowing the players to constantly want to explore the various dungeons and ruins in order to get new loot and crafting recipes as well but exploring these ruins and dungeons you may also run across puzzles what i enjoyed in particular forced the players to glide across a gap then hit multiple different buttons with ring attacks in order to open a door with a legendary ring behind it while doing all of this your character will also level up and gain skill points allowing the player to make a unique build through a fairly extensive skill tree that doesn't force you into any particular class for myself i personally started with going into tank while taking lifesteal skills then adapted my build to be a berserker heavy hitter allowing me to hit for crazy amounts of dps heal for almost my entire health bar and take almost any damage that was thrown at me i genuinely wish more games had skill trees like this as it allows games to be very unique when class building shroud is a zone of darkness that roughly encases one fourth of the entire map but is still a major part in the gameplay when going into exploration you'll be met with the shroud a zone of darkness that slowly suffocates the player over a variation of time the time you can stay in the shroud is dependent on multiple factors like armor potion buffs and the flame of altar level although depending on the armor you have it can severely reduce your shroud timer for example i use the north guard armor set that tanks shroud time but increases overall hp and overall resistances if your shroud timer runs out though you'll instantly die and have to run back and get your loot inside the shroud zones though you can do normal stuff such as grappling gliding dungeons and puzzles but there are two main sources you can't do outside the shroud one of these is the unique resources such as shroud wood shroud spores and cores and shroud liquid some of these you can get outside of the shroud but can get them more frequently inside of the shroud you can also explore unique locations called elixir wells inside the shroud these wells usually consist of small caverns at the bottom of ruins in these caverns the players will be met with various trials such as enemies explosives and bosses that'll eventually lead them to the shroud root when destroyed the shroud root disappears giving the player a free skill point and clears a small radius of shroud around itself allowing the player to fully loot and explore the area without being suffocated by the shroud for the most part this leads to finding good loot progressing character stats and progressing the main story something i really hate about the shroud is how thick the fog is at some points as sometimes it is physically impossible to see more than 20 feet forward but the shroud zones are insanely fun and help bring variation in overall world exploration and building making them insanely good and well thought out zones your boat does a lot of damage I'm getting back shots. Oh, don't let him look at me. <laughs> You're getting back shots. Hey, yo. You're dead. Oh, Take dude, all your I stuff. Was beating the brakes off that guy. Chop it. We all get skill points. Overall, Entrout is an amazing game as almost every feature in the game is very clean and very well designed. Not only does the game look amazing with its graphics alone, but its building is one of the best in any survival game I've ever seen. I'd actually love to see this type of building implemented into Pal World. While playing the game, I truly felt like it drew me in more and more as I played. Absolutely loved the combat and the progression as it felt like I was progressing at the exact rate the game wanted me to while still having a great time. With all that being said, I rate the game a 9.62 out of 10 and can't wait to keep playing the game after this review and with all of the content to come. Let me know what your favorite part of Entroud is in the comments below. And if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, subscribe, and have a wonderful day.